Hey everyone, Kevin here from River City Graphics. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use loops with jQuery. So, let's get started. Alright, so here in Dreamweaver I have our files that we've been working on in the last few videos. Now if you haven't seen those videos, I recommend that you go and check those out because we have discussed concepts in those videos that we will be using in today's lesson. So to get started, I'm just going to click on my script.js file and I'm going to start by commenting out a couple of lines that we created in our last video. That's going to be these two lines, these last two lines called my sentence and alert. So I'm going to put a forward slash in front of both of those. And what we need to keep is of course our document ready because we always need to have our code inside of that function. Then we also want to keep our nested array. So in the last video we discussed the importance of arrays in storing information and multiple information and keeping it organized and things like that. So what we're going to be talking about today is how to make a loop in order to take and use this information more efficiently. So to get started, we're going to start by creating our loop basically shell. In order to do that, you need to put a dollar sign and then a period and then we're going to say each and then an open parenthesis. Now, if you have code recommendations come up, you'll see that it says collection, callback, and then index and value. Now, the first thing is collection, which is going to be basically what you're selecting that holds your information. So in this case, it's going to be our variable, which is an array called my nested array. So I'm just going to put that name in. So my nested array and then you'll see that you need a comma and a space and you need a callback which in this case is going to be a function and then an open parenthesis and a closed parenthesis and inside of there we're going to have index and value so inside of these parentheses I'm going to say index comma space value okay and then outside of this we need to close this off with basically uh, an open curly bracket close curly bracket a close parenthesis and a semicolon. Okay, so now once you have this syntax ready, you're ready to actually start using your loop. So our loop is connected to our array with this code right here. So whatever is right here needs to be the same as the variable uh, which is holding your array that you have up here. So that's how those are actually linking. So what we're going to be able to do is take and use this loop to go through our array one time and then we're going to go through it another time and another time and so it's going to be going through it as many times as you have arrays so in this case we have Kevin Cool which is one array we have Bill Awesome which is another array because we have multiple ones within the same so and then we have a third one right here which is Tom Fantastic now if you remember from the last video this is a concept we discussed this one is going to be the number zero represents this entire array this one is one and then this other one is two. So that is represented within our loop by this word index. So index is basically talking about that number. So this is going to be zero and the index for this one is going to be zero. So if we wanted to see that a little bit better, we're going to just take and alert that out. So I'm just going to say alert, open close parentheses and a semicolon. And then inside of our parentheses, we can take and just put the variable index. So now you'll get a little bit better of an idea of what the loop is actually doing. So we can take and come back over to our source code, preview this in Chrome, and you can see that it alerts out zero, then one, then two. So it's put out three alerts. Now in our code, we've only put it to say one alert. You can see right here in our script, you can see we've only written one alert, but yet it came up three times and each time it had one more number or zero one two so it was adding one so why this is is basically it takes and it goes through here and it alerts out this zero one two so since we know that that's what happens right there if this is actually alerting out the number and the position then this value is obviously going to alert out the value so we can take and put value in here and see what happens make sure we spell value correctly okay so we'll save that and we'll take and go back over to Chrome, refresh this, and you can see that it alerts out Kevin Cool, Bill Awesome, and Tom Fantastic. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Let's close these other tabs. Go back over to Dreamweaver. So now you can see that it's alerted out the entire value of our array. So we got both of Kevin Cool, Bill Awesome, and Tom Fantastic. So since we learned in the last one that you can actually take and use these square brackets in order to specify down what you want, we can start to get a little bit more fancy. So if we wanted, say, the value of each of these things, the first thing, which was going to be Kevin, then it's going to be value, which is going to select all of these, and then it's going to be the number zero. Okay, so we're going to take and put in square brackets the number zero and we can refresh that and so now it's going to say Kevin, Bill, and Tom if we did everything correctly. So you'll see it alerts out Kevin, Bill, and Tom. 
okay? So now what we can do is maybe take and make a sentence so that you can see the real power of this because right now we're just kind of alerting more than one thing. So what we're going to do is make a sentence out of this. So I'm just going to cut out our value that we've been creating here, put our alert down and we'll just paste this out. We'll actually make a new variable so we can make a sentence kind of like we did in the last video. So we'll just call it variable and we'll call it, uh, how about loop sentence, okay? Space equals space. And now we can actually start putting what we want in there. So the first thing is, of course, going to be our value zero. So this is going to get the name Kevin first. Then it's going to get the second time this loop runs, it's going to get Bill. And then the third time it runs, it's going to get Tom. So that's what we have basically held in this. So every time it changes names. So then after that, let's say that we wanted to say um, is, and then we wanted to put maybe their second word that they have in their array. So we'll do space plus space, two quotes, space, plus space. Now this is concatenation. We discussed this in the last video. You can see that we have some of it up here. Now basically we're just adding to what we already are going to be putting into this variable. So we want the word is and we want it to be spaced out, right? So we'll put a space is space. And then over here, we need to get the second word, which is going to be cool, awesome, and fantastic. And so in order to get that, we're just going to take and copy our value because value is pulling from these things. And now instead of zero, which in this case is Kevin, Bill, and Tom, we want one, which is going to be the second word in their array. Okay, so we'll take and put a one there. And then we can take and put a semicolon at the end. And then we can take and alert out this variable. So I'm just going to copy loop sentence and we can take and post that or paste that into alert. So we'll take and go back over to Chrome and we'll see what we have. So we refresh, we get Kevin is cool, Bill is awesome, and Tom is fantastic. So if you remember from the last video, or if you didn't watch the last video, you can see from this code, what we were doing before is alerting out almost the exact same thing, except that we had to build this entire long sentence. Now, here we have two lines that creates three sentences for us. So if we wanted to do that same thing without using a loop, we would have to take and basically copy out each of these so we have three sets of these. And so it just becomes really troublesome. Now you might think, well, three, three copies of that isn't really that much. But if you think about the possibilities of this, maybe your array holds a thousand items. You don't want to take and copy and paste this a thousand times, whereas two lines could do almost the exact same thing. So here we're basically looping through every single thing and you can use it for more um, basically helpful tools such as maybe you wanted to build a drop down menu and you wanted to have a list of names and say Kevin is cool and then the second item in the drop down menu says Bill is awesome and so you could loop through that and create that dynamically so you don't have to write out this code every time so these loops basically save you time in doing steps that are repetitive. So I hope you guys learned something in this video. That's about all we're going to be covering today. So again make sure and subscribe, rate, and comment. I do have a new video coming out every week so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.